Hey everybody, welcome to T-Roy Cooks. I appreciate you joining. Today we're doing some beef short ribs on the Weber Smoky Mountain, low and slow. And uh, also, I'm trying out a new product for the Weber Smoky Mountain. Y'all stick around, it's gonna be good. T-Roy's chilling in the backyard grilling, cooking up some barbecue for you. T-Roy's chilling in the backyard grilling, showing you that you can cook it too. But he cooks responsibly. So I got some lit charcoal, just gonna pour them right in the middle. Alright, for the wood, I'm trying out some brand new mojo bricks. Y'all seen me use mojo bricks in the past. Um, these are they're not solid, they're like compressed wood, and uh, they work really well, they last a while. This is a brand new one though. This is a brand new flavor. Cherry Vanilla Bourbon Mojo Bricks, folks. Again, links are down below for everything you see in this video. But he takes the uh, a bourbon barrel and takes the shavings from the, uh, the oak barrel and also incorporates that with some cherry wood and compresses it. And that's what you get here, the Cherry Vanilla Bourbon Mojo Bricks. Anyway, first time checking these out. I thought it'd be pretty good with some beef. I'll throw a couple of these in there. Here we go. Kind of put one of them close up and one of them a little ways away. Alright, here goes the midsection. And you can see the uh, insulated blanket here. There you go, just Velcro straps on. There you go, Velcro there, Velcro at the bottom. And uh, got my door on there. And I need to throw the water pan in there and throw some water on. But let me show you what this is going to look like all set up here the insulated blanket and everything. This is the top. It's got a, uh, got a Velcro strap here going across the vent. There you go. Basically, it just fold, it just fits over. Now, I will say, I had to remove, had to remove my, my big ass dial right here, <laughs> uh, as Harry Sue calls it. I had to remove my, my big thermometer. But it's designed, it's got a hole right here, under here, uh, that will fit the regular size dial that comes with your Weber Smoky Mountain. So, if you've modded your Weber Smoky Mountain, you may need to, you know, remove the temperature gauge is what I'm saying. And also right here, this is uh, designed to cover the original door gap right here. I mean, my door will open somewhat. There you go. See, I can open the door, but when I close it, it closes back on top of that because my, my stainless steel door here is a little bit larger than the original door. But I can... I can get it to fit back on there just like that. So, not a big deal. And uh, I think this is gonna work out pretty good. This is made by, it says right here, a Heat Shield Products. So folks, if you're interested, let me get you up here where I can see you. So Heat Shield Products. I don't even know if they know I'm making a video. They just asked me to review it for them. But um, it's, it's, it's summertime here in Texas. But I know some of you guys up in the North States, you know, or even down in Australia. I don't know if they ship to Australia or not, but anyway. Um, where it's cold, an insulated blanket on your Weber Smoky Mountain can get you a lot better fuel efficiency. Trust me. So, I'm looking forward to trying this thing out both in the summertime and this coming winter here in the States so I can see how it does. Uh, it's, it's fairly thick. It doesn't weigh a lot, but it is fairly thick and it's, uh, it's well sewn together and everything, well made material. And uh, I believe this company makes products that. Uh, like you would bolt on to motors, like uh, for automobile racing and stuff. I believe that's what they do. Heat shield products. Could be wrong. Link will be down below, though, if you're interested in checking it out. Um, I'm thinking here in the summertime, I know when I have my black Weber Smoky Mountain sitting out in that direct 120 degree heat, the sun, the heat that absorbs in that black metal, actually heats up my Weber Smoky Mountain. So I'm hoping that this will alleviate that, this blanket. And uh, if it does, then that'll help me be able to keep my temps lower than I normally would during direct summer, okay? And also fuel efficiency. So we're gonna check it out, folks. I'm liking it so far, though. Working out real good. All right, let's go get the meat ready. We've got some cooking to do. All right, guys, I'd definitely say this insulated blanket is working because I've got all my vents set down to like a size of a number two pencil opening. 
and that's what I usually have it and I'm usually about 250 ish now I'm 275 all right so I and I did not use a full load of chimney in the charcoal I used about half a chimney load and uh, all told is about a half a bag of Kingsford blue in in here and in the chimney so I think what I need to do is maybe close down one of these vents I'm gonna close down this back one back here because my my woods on either side so I want air to get to that so I'm just going to go ahead and close that back vent back there. We're going to shoot for about 250. Um, I went ahead and added some water in the water pan and also cleaned up my grate, so that's good to go. All right, let's put some beef short ribs on here. Some of these look nice, some of them don't. <laughs> you know, that's how it goes. Well, we got some honking ones in there. Of course, we got some thin ones too. Kind of take the good with the bad, I guess. Ain't that right? And uh, I want to keep it simple because I'm going to do something here in a little bit uh, that'll really kind of spruce this up. I want it to be uh, shredding apart at the end, and I think I'm going to serve this over some pasta. So, keeping the seasoning simple, y'all. I just put on, uh, use whatever rub you want, of course. I'm just using this one from my buddy Scott over at Texas Sausage. Uh, Texas Sausage Company is his website. Uh, now, nah, anyway, I think it's hot, TexasHotSausage.com. I'll put it down below. This is just his uh, his uncle, not uncle, granddad, I think, grandpa's uh, recipe for just an all-purpose rub. Let me put the top back on this, baby. There you go. Let those temps calm down a little bit, and I can talk to you a little bit. But uh, anyway, this is a good all-purpose rub. Uh, salt, pepper, garlic. Uh, I like it. It's good stuff. Texas Sausage Company. And man, he makes the best sausage in the world, too. Check it out if you haven't already. He does ship uh, primarily when it's cooler outside, so I don't know if he's shipping right now uh, here in Texas. He's actually in Austin. Y'all have seen him over here before with my crawfish bowls and stuff and barbecues with Harry Sue. All right, so we're going to let this baby... Uh, cool off a little bit get down to about 250 we're going to cook her for a couple hours get a little bit of smoke on them and we'll bring y'all back here in a couple hours and check them and see what they're looking like so see you here in a few all right guys it's been two hours we've been maintaining about 250 260 tell you what we're going to do now though we're going to wrap these babies so they can get really super tender hopefully this full is not blowing out my camera anyway i got mirepoix in here carrots onion celery going to take and put these in here and we're going to let them get all happy get that over here let's move this a little bit I'll put that back on here in a minute I just got a turkey pan here um, yeah kind of get all that stuff down up in there there you go I'm going to guess and say internal probably uh, about 150 maybe 160 let's go ahead and add a little bit more of uh, Scott's all-purpose rub here so I have not seasoned in veggies just throw you some salt and pepper in there like I said use your own rub and I'm not using the barbecue rub again because I, I don't want that barbecue flavor it smokes okay I just don't want a bunch of uh, like brown sugar flavor stuff up in there now folks this is where we get serious get you a nice bottle of wine I got some of this Bertinelli Estates y'all know Valerie Bertinelli cool chick um, seven off uh, whatever you want to use this is a red wine and already been uh, sipping off of it a little bit for you a good uh, half bottle or so up in there it's gonna make that meat really really good y'all just be sure you save you some down there it's gonna save you a little bit for a drink beef broth we're going in with some beef broth I got some beef bone broth it ain't even open yet. Ugh. There you go. Ooh, that wine and that beef broth smelling good and good veggies. It's gonna be smelling much better later too. Get just a nice heavy duty foil. Just cover it up. There we go. Gotta get the lid back on that baby. She's getting hot. There we go. All right, we're still going to maintain about 250, 260, somewhere in that range. 
If I need to adjust some of the bottom vents, I will, especially that back one that's still closed. I haven't touched the vents since y'all saw me change them last time. Uh, let me get you up here. Anyway, so I haven't touched the vents, but I will open that back one up a little bit, just kind of let that charcoal on that side of the, the charcoal basket start getting a little hot. Let them uh, get consumed. Man, I almost messed up. I forgot to throw in some time. Got to have some time with some Italian food, folks. All right. Got some fresh thyme. Just throw you some sprigs in there, folks. Ain't gotta be all pretty. It's all gonna blend together in the end. It's gonna be good. Well, it's smelling good already. All right, cover back up. And again, we'll, we'll see y'all here in about four hours. Whoop. Doggy, that's smelling good. All right, guys, it's been six hours. I think this meat's tender enough. I haven't actually checked it or looked at it since I covered it in foil. So it's been in the full four hours and uh, fixing, to, fixing to probe it, see if it's tender enough. Hopefully it is, I'm getting hungry. But uh, I wanted to say a little, a few more words about this, uh, this, this Weber Smoky Mountain blanket from Heat Shield Products, man. You know, usually on Weber Smoky Mountain, as the charcoal burns and the wood chunks burn and stuff, you may see a 15 to 25 degree variance in the temperature. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. This thing, if it varied five degrees, it was weird because it usually stayed within three degrees. This, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just stoked for this thing. I'm, I'm super impressed with it. Uh, in fact, I can touch this, this lid on this Weber Smoky Mountain. I mean, seriously, it's, it's a little warm, but it's not anything I mean, I'm not going to touch right there, but I don't know what this is made out of. But dude, it's insulation for sure. It rocks. I love it. And uh, y'all go check them out, man. Link will be down below. I'll, uh, I'll talk to them. I, don't, I, I can't promise you anything, but I'll talk to them, see if maybe I can get you a little promo code to use on there. And I think they're making these for the Weber Kettle. They make... I don't know if they're for sale yet, but I think they're making them for the Weber Smoky Mountain and the Weber Kettle. Um, both, both sizes, the, the main two sizes. But uh, what else I was gonna say? Oh, I think they call, I think they call this heat blanket, uh, or, or this insulation blanket, I guess I should say, because you can use it summer or winter. I think they call it the barbecue I think. All right, let's, let's probe this meat. Let's see how tender it is. There we go. Now let's get this lid off here. Got my handy dandy thermo pin right here. Man, if y'all don't have a thermo pin, y'all go check them out. I've got like six of them. I love these things. All right, let's start probing some meat here. Oh yeah, baby. Look, that one's coming off the bone. Yeah, that's tender. Woo, doggy, that's gonna make some good eating right there, y'all. Oh, temp-wise, it's probably like 210, 220, 205 on that one. 204. Fifi, I'm making a movie. Folks, the probe reads at this very, it's got a little beveled edge right here. It reads on that very tip end. So when you're, when you're pushing your probe in, don't push it so far that it's, that it's hitting the bone. Because that's going to give you a false reading. You really, Ideally, you want to stick it about halfway through. So about like that. Okay, that's all you want. That's all you need to go. Don't stick it all the way into the bottom, especially with a full pan like this. Cause you poke a hole in there, you lose all your liquid, which we need. The meat's cooled off. I got it shredded. Let me show you what it looks like. This looks good, y'all. Oh man, y'all gonna like this. Check this out. Check out that smoke ring. Oh my gosh, driving my dogs nuts, y'all. That's. That's good, man. That is really, really good. Mm -mm. I was taking some pictures earlier. I actually had two of these ribs with the rib bone. I think I just had two of them that the rib did not fall off. But anyway, get you back up here where uh, I can see you. And let's, uh, let's give this one right here. Y'all know I like my bark. There's a nice piece of bark right there. Hopefully y'all can see that. This meat's just Super tender, falling apart tender, man. Mm. Oh yeah. 
Very good. Just a subtle hint of smoke. Actually, I can taste that cherry. I'm not picking up the vanilla, but I am picking up maybe a little bit of the bourbon flavor. Of course, the, the wine flavor from the, uh, uh, when I had it in the pan, <clears throat> maybe masking that bourbon flavor a little bit. Folks, I got to go eat. This is good. Hope you all enjoyed this. Y'all be sure and check out all the links down below in the description box. Just hit show more. And uh, y'all show some love to my, my people that uh, send me stuff every once in a while. So uh, if y'all like this, thumbs up. Hope you share the video. When you do, please tell all of your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. Cheers, everybody. We'll see y'all next time. Let's go eat, girls. <laughs>